Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of Mental Architecture, Building the Mind One Moment at a Time, which is based off of my book, which is available for sale on Amazon at a discount price. Today's episode is going to focus on Chapter 1, Section 3, which is The Sound of Silence. What was that? Well, you just heard it now. So I'd like to start off this video with a quote from my son, Adam Blumenfeld, who told me this one day while we were on the while we were on the phone together and I was driving home and I thought this was a pretty brilliant quote about silence. Rhythm is a series of pauses. Rhythm is a pattern of absences of sound. The brain likes patterns. Your brain will be able to process a constant streamline of information. Since that was my son's quote, I'm going to have him explain to you what he meant by it. And then I'd like to also show you a clip of one of the songs that he's going to share with you. What I meant by this quote is that rhythm is a pattern of absence of sounds, which means without rhythm, you don't have um, a fun, enticing, interesting song. It would just be a slur of notes. Um, <clears throat> for instance, in the song that you're about to see, uh, song like pauses, even if they're small, they like, dramatify the song and make the song enticing, make you want to listen to the song more. Without those pauses, it doesn't make the song as interesting. Really good job on that song, Adam. Thanks. Um, so I just had a couple questions for you. When you listen to music, you really don't notice the pauses because they come so frequently and they're so brief that I don't even think you necessarily pick up on them. But there were two really significant pauses in that song that you played that I think everybody would notice. The first was the one that said dramatic pause and the second one is the end of the song. So all songs end and they end in silence. And I'd just like you to talk about that for a second, both the dramatic pause and the one at the end, and kind of what, what you hope listeners would get out of that. Well, the big pause in the middle was <clears throat> to make the song more like dramatic in the change, make it more interesting so it stands out to you. Um, the closure at the end, the closure of silence at the end, is just want, is just for, to let the listener feel satisfied when he's finished listening to the song. Yeah, so I think... All songs can evoke emotions with not only the melody that's being played, but the silence kind of helps create the start of that emotion that the listener feels. So thank you so much for stopping by Mental Architecture and sharing your wisdom with us and also your awesome guitar playing. So Thanks. really appreciate it. So silence is literally duration. And during that time, you don't hear music. But in between the silences, whether they're really tiny and imperceptible, are really long, that's where the music starts to take on meaning, because all music is is just really a collection of notes separated by periods of silence. So if silence is so important, why don't we spend more time listening to it? Does silence really exist? I mean, that's an interesting question. If empty space doesn't really exist, then how could the complete absence of sound exist? So NASA uses an anechoic chamber, which is a vacuum sealed room basically you've got all kinds of sound deadening materials in there to prepare its astronauts for space flight because in space it's very very quiet and a lot of people have difficulty being inside of such a chamber it's almost like having a certain kind of auditory claustrophobia so this guy by the name of Clinton Wen got permission to visit one of these anechoic chambers in New York and when he went inside he had to be in there for 45 minutes people thought he would lose his mind but he didn't lose his mind. He just ended up getting very frustrated with certain things. When he was in there, he could hear his own heartbeat. He could hear 
uh, very slight movements. You could hear his lips moving, his eyelids blinking. Imagine how annoying that would be because we are so accustomed to the silences around us, which truly aren't silent, but a sort of a baseline threshold for what we consider silent that we can't imagine things being so quiet that you could hear like your eyelids blink. So that was very frustrating for him, but also very eye-opening just to understand at how quiet things really could get. But in terms of just having no sound at all, complete vacuum of, of sound, that you won't find that anywhere in space. You won't find that anywhere. Any, in space, it will sound like there's no, there's nothing out there. But that's just because a lot of what you hear, or what you can't hear, is below the threshold um, of human hearing. And there's certain sounds animals can make that you also can't hear because it's above the threshold of human hearing. You can only hear what you're meant to hear. Besides being important in music, silence is also extremely important in communication. Not only oral communication, but written communication as well. So I want to talk to you about the seven different types of silence that I discuss in my book. We'll start with the first one, which is called referential silence. So referential silence is where you make reference to something without ever really saying it. So if I were to ask you, for instance, how many animals do you have? And you said three cats. It could be implied that you have zero dogs or zero rabbits because supposedly you were going to tell me exactly how many animals you had. So that would be considered a form of referential silence alluding to the fact that you don't have dogs, rabbits, ferrets, chinchillas, or anything else. The second type of silence is silence as an emotive force. So basically prayer, meditation, contemplation, anything where you stop talking and you turn your thoughts inward would be considered a form of emotive silence, especially in a social situation when you're around other people. So if you've ever been around others and they say, let's have a moment of silence for this cause or for that cause, that's an example of using silence as an emotive force to convey emotion and feeling. If you've ever had someone give you the silent treatment, then you've experienced the third type of silence, which is silence as a form of enactment. So sometimes the best way to express your feelings to somebody is to not express anything at all. And that silence can serve as a form of communication. The person's body language, their, maybe what they said before they went silent would indicate to you what that means. It can be very uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes two people who are very happy together can just be silent in each other's company and feel really good about it. The fourth kind of silence, which is similar to the enactment one, but not exactly the same, is procedural silence. So for instance, if two people are talking to each other, it's customary for one person to be silent while the other person talks. And then they take turns back and forth. So in that case, silence is just part of the procedure of the behavioral norm between the two people. The fifth type of silence is silent as a right or concession. So the Miranda warning is a perfect example of this. You have the right to remain silent. Nobody can force you to talk and they tell you anything that you say can be admissible in a court of law. So that's an example where you're told that your silence is a right. It could also be a concession as well. The sixth type of silence talks about the uncomfortable and awkward silences between or among strangers, perhaps sitting in a room together or in a crowded bus or somewhere like that. And in that case, silence serves the phatic function, which basically it encourages people to engage in meaningless small talk. So maybe they want to talk about the weather or they'll talk about what they had to eat that day, just anything to avoid the awkward and uncomfortable silence. Oh, I guess we can't make small talk on a video that's already been recorded. Anyway, the seventh type of silence is poetic silence. And this is the type of silence that poets use in the form of caesuras, ellipses. It doesn't have to just be poets. Um, other types of writing use indicators of silence as well. So that is a type of silence to indicate some kind of meaning or very similar actually in a lot of ways to the silence you find in music. And music, of course, has notation for silence, and so does poetry. So I think that, that different art forms can make use of silence in creative ways. Visual art makes use of blank space or white space as silence to convey meaning in art. So there's just silence everywhere you look, but it's not true silence. Let's remember that. There is no such thing as the absence of anything, because you wouldn't be able to find it anywhere. Okay, that's a lot right there. But hopefully you understand what I mean. 
Thank you everybody for joining me for my final video of chapter one, The Sound of Silence. We're going to start next week with chapter two, which is No Point in Time, which talks about time perception in a very deep and mesmerizing way. So I hope you'll join me. Don't forget to like and subscribe down here to the videos and to send me any comments that you might have. I'd be happy to respond to them. There are also links to my other videos at the end of this video if you want to catch it that way or you can just subscribe to my channel. All right, I hope everybody has a great day and I look forward to seeing you all soon.